One, two, one, two. Welcome back to the Forensic Unplugged channel, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Installing windscreen wipers on a Porsche 996 or perhaps a 986 as well. Uh, so Carrera and, and uh, Boxster. When you, these are Porsche OEM windscreen wipers. When you get them out of the box, one of them have a, will have that plastic bit on them, but on them, one of them won't. If you're in the UK, you have to pop out by lifting up those plastic rims and flip them round so everything's the correct way round, okay? <coughs> the wiper, which doesn't have the plastic bit on it, again, you've got to pop that out, flip that round, you, you'll notice a curve on it. You want the curve going upwards, I am told, okay? If it goes downwards, you run the risk of it clipping into your scuttle. The whole reason I'm doing this is all the wiper blades that were on there were smacking into the scuttle. So every time I was driving the car, it was like someone was tap dancing on your head. Okay, so you clip these in, no problem there. If you can't do that, you're in trouble. Um, if you need to adjust, if you need to adjust the arms, pop off these caps, get a 13 mil socket, loosen them off, set them in the right place. You want them just below, so they sit about, yeah, you can see there, it's about an inch below that black line. And when they go up and down, they do not tap on the scuttle. Then lock them in nice and tight. You do need to, um, you do need to undo the boot to, to get these nuts off. You can operate them up here if you want and then turn it off. You get the idea, very, very easy. Little tip, when you're putting the socket in there, uh, push down on it and then it will level, you'll be able to get the socket in, otherwise it won't always sleeve on there. That's it guys, that's all you need to know. If you've got any problems, let me know. Just the crunch test is no tappy tappy on scuttle. So just no noise basically is all you want. What's that there? Okay, good. So there you go, video complete. Um, how are you all doing guys? I thought I'd do an update on the car as well. I'm just gonna shoot a video on traceless because there's a, there's a new version of it out it will do a built hammer traceless glass cleaner so this windscreen's filthy as you can see here so I'll, I'll save cleaning it i'm getting through to the list this is the final kind of list i've got to do really give or take the odd job on the car so i've just done the wipers just got to sort out the drain hole which i'm probably going to try and get done today in there one of the drain holes is like these plastic tubes in there like that <laughs> um, that's blocked so it's been pulled out so it will just go through the hole there's a little bit of surface corrosion which I need to treat um, so that's a little five minute job hopefully if, if you, nothing's a five minute job I've got a new gear knob and gator coming eventually that should be arriving soon that's got to be installed I've done my short sorted out the short shifter in there if those of you have been following it on the main forensics detailing channel the Carrera badge will go on but before I put the Carrera badge on I need to get a little section of paint redone I need to get this section all the see that's lacquer peel there it's all peeling off where hot liquid is sprayed through and sat and bust, busted the clear coat god knows what the liquid was but it was corrosive uh, I saw that that's probably what's happened um, so I'll take that off I'll take that off and then go to the body shop and just get that painted with no blend, just colour matched. And that I don't, you know, it shouldn't be too expensive. Um, I need to get my wheels balanced. I hit a patch of vibration when I when I get to about 110 miles an hour. <laughs> no, it, it happens about 70, 60 to 70, a vibration starts. And if I keep going, it eventually punches out of the... Um, the vibration at about 85 to 90 and it, and it goes. <laughs> so you, you can punch through it. Not that I'd find, I've only found this out on private roads and tracks. Um, so that's got to be a wheel balance issue. And I noticed, I, I thought it was the front right. Just trust me. <laughs> and I noticed there's a big strip of weights missing off the front right. So I think it's the front right, but it could be all of them or it could be a buckle. So I'm going to get all that sorted. That's important. I don't want it vibrating. Then after that, I'm going to get a geo done on it because it needs it. I want it, I want it tracking properly and geoed properly for a fast road geo. So I'll take it down to NAD. NAD UK is a local guy, really, really nice guy and just brilliant. So he's the guy I use for that. Um, I'm going to get it serviced, just get an oil change and filter done. Um, and then I need to do the speakers as well. Um, my One of my front speaker in there is farting you know it's torn 
So you get the bass going. It's a <laughs> Every time the bass goes, <laughs> no, that just drives me nuts. Um, so Dan, uh, not Dan, Rob from the Throttle Cable channel, who's got loads of fixes, really good channel if you've got a 996, you know, you want to, all the jobs that you need to do, Rob has done and documented. Um, and it's just really handy. It's one of those channels that's just really handy. So all I'm going to literally do is follow exactly what he's done because he's got the same as me. I don't think he has the speakers in the door. I just have two speakers there and two back there. In fact, I should have done it when I had my seats out, but that's no problem. That's no problem. Uh, I can always take them out again, which is one of the seats. So he's, yeah, there's a, there's a fix you can do to upgrade the speakers and get a much better sound. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then after that, I think everything's done. Um, and the car will be solid and drive solid and doesn't need brakes, doesn't need tyres, you know, everything's done. If it just needs a good detail then, um, well, the inside, will, the inside will be done. It just needs paint correction, really, a polish. Basically, you know, you can make it sound all cool, but it just needs paint correction. It just needs a polish, like a good polish, though. And it ain't going to be perfect. And, yeah, some of it may, might be. I... I'll hold fire till I do it, but I think I'm going to have a nightmare with this part. The rest of it will be fine. <laughs> yeah, the rest of it will be fine, and I'm going to be bugged to hell about that because I, it's going to not be perfect, and it's going to be. I'm just going to be thinking that I need to repaint it, and also there's solvent pop. You can see it, can't you? Actually, look, it's the, what you're seeing on camera isn't all solvent pop, but there's a bit of solvent pop. It's everywhere. Um, on this panel, it's everywhere. I think, and I'm 99% sure it's solvent pop. It's just a tiny chance. No, it's like a 0.1% chance it could be something else, but I think it's solvent pop. I can see the little craters. Um, yeah, so there's dodgy paint gone on the car there. So this is just the way of the world. So really, I should really get that painted, but... Pfft. You know, mm, I'm not sure. Maybe that can be done later on or something like that. You know, it's a 25-year-old car. It's not a perfect car, paint-wise, but I just don't care as long as it looks glossy. You know, looks nice and it's clean and all detailed and the tyres are dressed and all that. We're done. At some stage, these do need refurbing. There's bits of bubbling paint in the barrels and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, being painted. And it's either not been maintained or not painted very well maybe a bit of both but there's paint bubbling off in the barrels it's hard they're quite hard to see what's going on in the barrels on this car Pretty sorry if you can't see me um yeah but they, you know you need to get in there and barrel brush out the alloys if you're going to keep them nice and some people don't even have barrel brushes so like this could have gone like it could have been the last like eight years where the barrels have never really been cleaned properly so the fallout you know, the brake, abrasive brake dust beds into the clear coat and it rusts and it expands and then you get more blasting in and it can crack the lacquer. And then once that lacquer cracks, it exposes, you know, the water gets in there and it stays in there. And then you get oxidization happening and it bubbles up and then more cracks off. And then eventually your paint system starts failing. And, um, you know, you leave that, you've all seen rotten paintwork on the inside of barrels this is at that starting phase where yeah because they've just not been maintained that's okay because I wanted to paint them anyway <laughs> get rid of the uh, copper and just go back to OEM silver I think I think you know I don't know it's not an OEM kind of style car although I've pushed it back towards OEM but it's always going to have the cage in the back I think I'm going to go get rid of these Recaros and put in um what are they called? I can't remember what they're called. Oh, Jesus. Oh, some other seats that Darren's got in his that are a bit more comfy and leather. Um, not Porsche ones, though. So I'm not against another colour. Um, and I quite like, you know, metal colours. But this bronze is a bit bronzy. It's a bit bronzy. It looks okay when it's dirty. When it's cleaner, it looks a bit too bronzy, a bit too rich. I like a subtler kind of colour. Like a vice gold would be okay. But I, I just don't know. I think just silver. Just silver would work. Black, no, not for me. 
not on the red, um, not with the lip around the outside. Although, you know, some people will like that. But no, silver, I think, is the way to go. Not red, no. Yeah, just silver. <laughs> Loads of other good news, though. I've been really working hard on this car. Um, working really hard on this car. And it's all come together, sort of like... God, that's bugging me. I just got to vacuum out all the crap. It was literally immaculate in here. Like 24 hours ago, this was all fresh, clear, and now it's just filthy. That's just the way it is. So the center console delete is in. I don't know if you can see that, which is making me very happy. And then I'm just waiting for that gear knob. But I, I fixed the, the cocking of the gear knob over to the left by, revert, by just twisting the, the main axle around, you know, the main rod gear knob shaft whatever you want to call it um which is what you're supposed to do when you install it uh, and it sits absolutely smack bang perfectly it feels great so much better i can't believe <laughs> i can't believe a short shifter was put in and it was put in you pay someone to put in the short shifter and they put it in the wrong way around and you live with it for like for how many years with it being cocked off to the left when it took three minutes to fix. Yeah, but there you go. Um, so, yeah, she's getting there. She really is getting there now. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. I'll see you later, don't forget to subscribe. If you wanna see updates on this car and how it's going, subscribe to the main Forensics Detailing channel. And if you really like the channel, why would you though? subscribe to unplug as well and I'll end this video with a sneeze oh no it's gone I'll just end the video Doug it will come